All right, everybody. It is October 14th. This is the Loose Screws podcast. This, as you can tell if you've ever listened to the show, is Commander Chig. I drew the shortest straw, and hence I need to try to corral this group into something of an organized mess. Joining tonight, <laughs> let's go through see what you guys have been doing the last week or whatever. We'll start with Nurgle. <laughs> uh, just, I think I've played eight hours in the past two weeks. It's work, and I've had a lot going on. Uh, and I'm actually on tonight for the first time, but I've been dealing with uh, the contractors from hell at work. And if anybody out there listening is a contractor, please don't be the contractor that makes it worse. Somebody hired you to fix something. Please don't be the person who makes it worse. Yeah, but how can you bill um, for more hours if you don't make things worse? Yeah, well, that that's making it worse, though. And just what? don't make it worse. Sounds like a you problem. It is a me <laughs> problem. And then my wife, Mrs. Nurgle, is a third grade teacher. She's starting an archery club or an archery team at her that school. Sounds safe. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's great. But so I've been spending a lot of time after work at her school helping put together, you know, unpack bows and put together the holding stands for the bows and building containers to hold arrows and hanging arrow proof curtains. And so I've been, been a lot of time doing that. But don't they and call containers the first that hold arrows quivers? No, these Isn't are little. They're, they're they're not quivers like somebody wears. They're little pieces of you, know, you just circle cut a piece of wood and put a piece of PVC pipe on it, and they go on the ground. So they're like little stands to hold the arrows on the gym floor. Um, so the kids have a. It's more like an umbrella stand than anything else. And then, just to add insult to injury, it's bear with me on this. So last year. Uh, my mother-in-law's house got hit by a, a in one of the hurricanes by a 10-foot oak tree, took out the house. They've been living in a rental home since then while they tried to buy a house in this market, which has been a pain in the ass. They've they've had multiple offers where they got outbid, but it look, they've put in an offer on a house. It looks like they're actually going to get it. It's way out in the middle of nowhere. It's on just under six acres. It has a shop that is an 1,800 square foot shed. The previous owners had horses, so it's got a six stall horse barn behind that, and it's got a stream that runs through the property. I'm like, oh crap, now I have to be really nice to my in laws because I want this house when they eventually die. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. it's awesome. Wow. If, if, I, if, if I had to pick a place I was going to live in my retirement, this is what I would have picked. You wow. monster. I, I am. I admit it. it. I admit I it. I love it. I don't know. You're, you're running out of time to outlive anybody, aren't you? Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate no, it. Like you, like you have any room to talk. Well, since he just, you know, yaffed up right there, we'll let Teflon go next. What's new in your world? Uh, just surviving. I mean, trying to figure out what's going on with my computer. That's so I have not played. You're you're tuning in via satellite tonight, right? You're on location. Yeah, yeah. Via satellite <laughs> on my phone. Right on. No, no. What? Your computer just out of nowhere, just started being a dick, or what happened? Yeah. Well, I mean, it just it's old. Like the parts are old, so. It's it okay. is bound. It's bound to happen. Like so, what it, it, it lasts for probably fifteen, twenty minutes, maybe thirty, if I'm lucky, and then it freezes. What what color is your RGB RAM set to? Oh, uh, <laughs> let me check. Uh, green. Change it to blue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if, that, if you run that, cooler, that nope. <laughs> yeah, if you run cooler, it won't shut down as quickly. Yeah, blue is a much cooler color. It'll help. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now now let's move on to our good buddy, uh, Commander Lieutenant Commander Data. I got it right the first time, first time ever. Yes. Thank you, thank you. You're you're doing great, much much better than Trax has ever done at getting my name right. I know, right? Somebody has to <laughs> do. I don't know. He does everything better than me. I wish I was cool. 
no one actually likes you. We all secretly hate you and just pretend to like you. <laughs> yeah, you, you shouldn't say that about tracks. Seriously, <laughs> no. no, we like you until tracks gets here. <laughs> I know, right? All right. <laughs> But what's no. what? What have you been up to, Mister Data? Uh, you're, you're a Mister now. Yeah. What have I been doing this week? The the like I think I've said before, the days just all blur together. You know, nowadays for some reason, I've gotten on a fair number of nights this week. We've had a pretty pretty active voice comms, probably two two or three nights this week in the Discord. I've been I've been working BGS. This week myself, what? trying to support, trying to, trying to feed our war addiction and our expansion, expansion Rama that we'll get into in a minute here. That's been my, my time in game this week. Yeah. What about in real life? Anything new, new remodelings, anything taking mm. up archery? <laughs> I was going to ask, is part of your duties, Nurgle, been to stock up the first aid kits? <laughs> um, around there. <laughs> Hope not. <laughs> No, no child has picked up a bow yet, so it <laughs> remains to be seen just how bad this can go. <laughs> uh, yeah. As far as um this old this old data's house um episode this week, been working on a set of steps out in a in a back part of my property, building a set of steps up a up a hill, a little hill. My dad and I have been doing. For like the past two months, building this little set of steps, we're we're slow. Just get to it when we can. What do All they right. lead to? You just you just went out back and was like this hill right here, good spot. <laughs> stairs, <laughs> <laughs> stairs. Yeah, you start out lower and you end up higher. <laughs> but what if well, you're going wow. the other way? Uh, Gravity assists. Oh, I didn't oh, think about that. You... <laughs> Son of we a build some stairs. We gotta build some stairs going down. I'm gonna go <laughs> in my backyard and build stairs just to compete with data. <laughs> There's just good go old Dubs' voice. voice. Dubs, <laughs> what have you been doing in game, out of game, uh, under trucks, things like that? Uh, so in game, I've played for a total of 15 minutes this entire week. Uh, yeah, work. Work Dang. work ends yeah. late every day. Uh, you know, we get all this brand new fancy equipment. Uh, a lot of it doesn't work properly. Nothing's configured properly, so we have to, uh, yeah, we have to do a lot of fixing to get it to where it needs to be. Haven't had is any it? time to work on my truck though. That's that's sad. Second mm -hmm. gear is officially gone. It has given <laughs> up. So it goes. Uh, it, it revs out to about 5,000 RPM in first gear, and then it says, hello, third gear. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, but how many wheels this, does been, it have? Huh? How many wheels does it have, though? All four of them are still oh. firmly attached. Oh, we my took, goodness. Last weekend, we took the seats out because mm -hmm. Austin wanted the center console for the cup holders, and I was like, fuck it, I don't want the center console. You can have it. <laughs> Turns out the carpet was pretty fucking gross underneath the seats because you know it was an old fucking farm truck and uh, i was like you know what who needs carpet carpets for fucking losers so we ripped it out i went to walmart bought a gallon of fucking truck bed liner and uh went yeah. to town inside yeah. the truck <laughs> every part of that became more white trash <laughs> uh, remove the center console who needs that oh who needs carpet in this old truck let's go Thanks. to walmart i've, I've kind of yeah. wanted to remove the center console because you know being a single cab truck there's not a lot of space to put you know fancy things like inverters and i got a 3000 watt inverter that i'm like well what better thing to do with it than Jeez. put it in the truck but the center <laughs> console's in the way because you know there's no room under the brackets so i'm like all right we get rid of the center console i mount the inverter in there I run two additional batteries, so there's going to be four batteries total <laughs> in this truck. I, All of them uh, are you're Optimus. In, <laughs> you're, you're in Texas, right? That but, makes sense. I, so, I guess you have an electric chair on a trailer behind you, and you drive around <laughs> just, just doing executions? Uh, that, no, no, that he's, no, no, no. He's got to be prepared to power his house because the grid out there is so unreliable. That's what it is. Yeah, the yeah. The yeah. Texas grid, it could fail at any fucking moment because yeah. apparently <laughs> the electric bills just aren't high enough for them to buy yachts and fix the grid. So 
Or they, were you just jealous that uh, Trax got that electric car and now you're trying to compete? <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm actually, me and my buddies were talking about that. Uh, Chevy debuted a crate setup in an old Blazer that's an electric drop-in. And I was like, damn, that's that's not a bad idea to drop $15,000 plus dollars on a $700 truck, right? That sounds like a, a fucking <laughs> How great do they, idea. How and do I'll you do, do it. it. How do you do an electric drop-in? Uh, a big-ass electric motor attached to a two-speed transmission replaces the engine and transmission, and as long as you have all the right bolt-up brackets, okay, so you, it goes it, where the powertrain would have gone, and then okay. you just get a really big battery pack so, that yeah. goes in there as well. So you're not you're not getting electric motors at each wheel. It's using the existing drivetrain. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Existing drivetrain, existing transfer case. It would just, you know, a big electric motor attached to it. I believe it's a two-speed transmission, I think, is what they use. I don't know exactly but i would do it i it understood none of that so expensive. i'm just gonna let you all know right now i have no <laughs> idea what you're talking Look, about me me and my friends are big fans of buying shit boxes and putting way too much work and money into them i'm pretty sure the batteries in my truck cost are worth more than the truck than was the when truck. i bought it <laughs> yeah <laughs> and doesn't but, uh, like if if you make your truck electric, it just goes from running on gasoline to running on natural gas, coal, and nuclear power for the most part, doesn't it? Wind and solar. Because all of our electric, they're they're up to about what ten yeah, no, percent of I, our grid. Did did you do you not realize that electric cars run on fairy dust and hopes and dreams and don't <laughs> cause any fucking detriment to the environment at all? Especially not when you throw the batteries away. It it only runs on fairy dust if you run them over individually. You know, if we just throw our batteries in the ocean, it's like they don't exist, and it's not an environmental concern. I, I like where this is going. <laughs> All right, yeah. so on this, let's move along. All right, let's go to the headlines for this week. Let's uh, move on to let's. So our first thing that actually involves Elite Dangerous, uh, PS4 Squadron, led by our good buddy. Um, uh, single malt Scotty, who is now also hanging out in, on the PC, which is pretty badass. Saw him today online. Um, they took silver in CQC on the PlayStation 4. Woo-hoo! On PC, we managed to finish fourth. That tied our highest finish in any category ever on the PC. So hopefully uh, Scotty and the gang can help me on PC and we can try to get an actual medal one of these times. Anybody and, have anything and to say on that? We just need to go ahead now, you know, over the next couple of days and work out a series of CQC night events because there are a lot of people who are like me who will happily play CQC, you know, as part of an event when we know a lot of people are playing, but won't just sit there and queue on the off chance of getting a match at odd times of the day. So we, we just need to set some up and just plan them out. Not a bad idea. I, I like I like where this is going. Um, I don't know. We, we always talk about this. Hate is always talking about, you know, setting up more and more events. And it just, I don't know. We all have families and our lives seem to get in the way all the time. So mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't mind if we had somebody who just started organizing crap like this. Anybody in the community, reach out to me if you want to be somebody that just wants to organize events. And we'll advertise them on the show and we'll... Yeah we'll get them going we just always seem to just run out of time to get these things going and we'll help you in any way we can and participate and participate yes so um other headline i see this week was uh william shatner went into space i know that's not uh elite dangerous news but that was one of the coolest things i've seen in a while i i I know nurgle you were watching that live Uh, yeah a lot of us were talking in discord as it was happening uh your thoughts first well two thoughts one just watching the launch that never gets old it absolutely never gets old watching a rocket launch into space and then even one shaped that much like a penis. Even, even one shaped like a giant. How and how appropriate is it that Captain Kirk went to space in a giant flying penis? A perfect, absolutely. It's, it's a. It looks like a Johnson. <laughs> that looks like a. <laughs> I mean, oh my the, god, airplane! Yes. The the only That's, two things really that would have the Austin yeah. Powers bit data. Austin yeah. Powers. Really? Uh, yeah. I mean, oh, the bad. only the only two things that would have made that more appropriate were if somebody in there was in full green. One of the female crew was in full green body paint to ride mm-hmm. up with him 
or it, once they got into space, somebody opened a cabinet and a whole bunch of tribbles fell out. Uh, <laughs> but, and it, but the other thing is, once he got back on the ground, and you know they had the camera in front of him, and Bezos was asking him what it was like. If you all you have to do is listen to him, and you can tell that was an incredible experience for him. I mean, for a man that has no problem talking and talking and talking, he was at a loss for words. And his voice was breaking up a couple of times. I mean, he had a, an extremely moving experience. And I've seen a couple of interviews with him since, and just listening to him talk about it is incredible. And if Beza, Bezos would just shut up and get out of the way, I think Shatner would be the best advertising for his space business he could ever ask for. Absolutely. What did you think, Data? Yeah, I'm glad. Glad Shatner got to experience that. It seems like it moved him a good bit. G- generally, I'm not too interested in rich people paying to launch themselves into quote unquote space. But I mean, the Star Trek connection made it pretty special. Yeah, for all of us, I'm, I'm pretty sure. One well, you- one one point of order. I've seen some talk in the Discord about red shirts, meaning if you're in the red shirt on Star Trek, the original series, you're going to die on the away mission. It's a bit of a mischaracterization. If you, if you, uh, of the death statistics in Star Trek, <clears throat> hold on. Let me, let me, I'm typing. Oh, Lord. Word. He's, let me he's going to the source. Here. <laughs> yeah. So while, there were more red shirts, you know, uh, security and engineering staff to die on the show than any other of the career tracks, you know, your gold shirts or your blue shirts. If you look at them, their deaths out of a percentage of all of the uh, staff that were shown on the show, they're only about 10% of the red shirts that were shown on the show died compared to. Um, gold shirt deaths represented 18% of all the gold shirts on the show. And now, uh, Does this break only, it down into a way party, or is this overall deaths? Because it, it pretty much wasn't at a death sentence if a red shirt was going on an away party. If you were That's a red shirt, if trope. you were a red shirt who did not have their name listed in the opening credits, your lifespan was really short. <laughs> so, so when you're giving these percentages, is it 18 or 10 percent of the red shirts died or the 10 percent of the deaths were red shirts and vice versa with like the gold shirts having the 18 percent because if only 18 percent of the gold shirts or whatever they died i mean there's a lot more red shirts so 10 percent of a massive number is still Mm -hmm. a lot of fucking people yeah so let me be more specific out of over three seasons, I'm getting this from a Nerdist article, by the way. I did not go through and count all of these myself. Oh, the Nerd. illusion is shattered. Yeah, sorry. A little peek, but peek behind the podcast curtain here. Out of the 239 red shirts on the show, 25 of them died. 10%. That's it? 55 oh, 25%. Gold, 25 of them died. That's 10%, oh. approximately. 55 gold shirts on the show, 10 of them died. That's eighteen percent of fifty-five. So, yeah, stop hating on the red shirts, people. That's still, they have a, that's still over twice as many deaths for the red shirts. All about the percentages. <laughs> but I mean, I, right. I guess twenty-five. Twenty-five is not a terrible number for as you know, long as it went. And right? moving on, acceptable <laughs> losses. We're going to go with that. Dubs, what do you think of launch? Anything? Uh, launch of of, sh- of, sh- of of the chat into space. I've been too busy working to pay attention to the news. You're Honestly. like, they put Kirk in space? All right, Teflon? <laughs> I, think, I think I might have seen it on Facebook <laughs> scrolling by. I was like, all right, cool. Anything on that? He's muted. I'll take that as nothing. Bueller, all right. Uh, oh, two things that I took away from it. A, uh, Shatner, William Shatner, Billy Boy, he was, he was like, that was a life changing experience from him. You could just, you could just tell he was, he was at a loss for words. Um, the one thing that he mentioned that, that tripped me out though is how 
he talked about going into space and and the the blue was like they pulled a blanket away and then it was just black and he looked up and it was death and down yeah. was the earth and that was life but then it was death he just yeah. kept like referring to space as just death and i'm like yeah that's scary as fuck um and then the, the other thing and it's not a very popular opinion is you know we all hate on bezos a little bit for you know interrupting him to grab champagne and just showing his face at all around all this stuff. But I don't know if I was one of the richest people on fucking earth, I would do whatever the hell I wanted to also, you know, I, I just launched captain Kirk into space and back. Of course, I'm going to be a part of this. He's looking more like Lex Luthor every day, but I, I, I don't care what that guy does. He, as long as he stays out of my shit. So, um, now, should we move? We don't have the soundboard. We can't do a squadron update noise. So, somebody make a noise. <sighs> Thank you, Data. And Nurgle. Squadron briefing. Squadron briefing. All right. So, we expanded last week. Uh, squadron we just, briefing. Oh, wait, I'm behind. Hey, that works. Uh, we, f- we fought the invasion war in Seven Andromeda. We won. We stuck. Yay. We um, initially were not going to expand again, but things lined up. Uh, we'll put some more info on that in the uh, BGS channels as the week goes on. But uh, there was an opportunity there, so we immediately pushed right back into expansion, which kicked off today. So everything is looking good there. We have had, so we've got. We won the invasion war in Seven Andromeda. We've already moved up and started another war as we head towards uh, taking system control there. That war will start after the tick tonight. We are building up six Andromeda. We seem to collect the Andromedas. uh, So we can build up towards system control there. And we're about, I think, 15 points separating us from the system controller. We should be able to close that in a couple of days and have another war going on. We've... One of the things that bothers me the most about the way BGS is set up is we spend so much time trying to cool off our own systems that, you know, due to random traffic or threatening to expand, we've got a couple of those that are an issue right now. The specifics are in the standing orders. Uh, some and just some general stats about where we are. Uh, we're now up to seven point two billion controlled population, which puts Loose Screws podcast faction at number 81 on the rankings list. Uh, you know, one of the goals we have been chasing for a while is catching down to earth astronomy and his Terra X faction. They're currently at 13.8 billion, so we're more than halfway, almost there. Uh, and then I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about what we mean when we say influence buckets, because over the past couple of weeks on the Discord and through DMs, I've had a couple of people ask me questions about this. And I figure if two or three people are asking me questions, there's at least twice that many out there who haven't asked the question yet. So we probably need to talk about this. But when, when we talk about either buckets or levers, we're talking about all the different ways there are to change the influence of factions in the game. And so there are four main buckets. There's bounties, trade, exploration, and missions. And each one of those has its own set of criteria for how things work. But the important thing to remember is that missions will raise the influence for the faction that gave you the mission. Bounties will raise the influence of the faction that issued the bounty. And... uh, That's regardless of what system they're in. Trade and exploration data only affect the faction that controls the station you're turning it in at. Uh, So that's why when when we ask for people to do trade or to turn in exploration data in a system, we specify what station to go to. Because if you turn it in at a station that's controlled by another faction, it will raise their influence. Um. Trade is the only one of those levers that can be used as a negative. All of the others, like bounties and missions and exploration data, are all positive. They'll raise the influence of whoever you do them for. 
trade, if you lose money when you're trading, actually acts as a negative and that faction will lose influence, which is sometimes we use the term trade bombs for dumping a whole bunch of negative trade on something. Um, you can run passenger missions too as a source of raising influence for a faction. It's important to look at passenger missions because they're not a separate bucket. So a passenger mission can either be trade or exploration and it'll show up in the data for that mission, it'll tell you, it'll show you, you know, what rank it's for and what rank you are, and you can kind of tell whether it's going to be exploration or or trade. There are a couple of direct sources of influence, and by direct, I mean it's you're not doing something to get influence; you're actually gaining influence directly. One of those is what we call murder hoboing, which is when you go find clean ships and destroy them, and you gain uh, infamy, which has to be worked off. Teflon can tell you all about that. Uh, the other is doing scenarios in various systems, and I know this is something we have not talked about very much, really. We've mentioned it briefly on the Discord a couple of times, but I don't think we've ever really talked about it on the show. But a lot of the installations that you find Horizons installations, that is, that you find in systems like um, mega ships and orbital installations, things you can't land at. Most of those, if you go up to them and scan them and wait, will eventually spawn some type of attack and defend scenario. And it's just like it's like entering a conflict zone. It'll ask you to pick a side. You're either defending this the installation or you're attacking the installation and but most of those require some other uh, state to be active in the system, like a war or something like that. So that it's not a com terribly reliable method of gaining influence. But when they're available, you get, if you're like defend, uh, I was doing some defend the mega ships this afternoon. So you'll get a direct bonus to influence for the faction that's controlling the mega ship, plus you'll get bounties. So you can, it can really be a double whammy, and it can be when those are available, it can be a great way to both gather bounties and get direct sources of influence. And then all of those buckets, be they bounties or trade or exploration data or missions, have a we use the term soft cap. Soft cap is not correct term because it's all on a curve, and there's diminishing returns. So after a certain, you'll never stop getting a benefit from it, but the amount you get will fall off a cliff after you hit that point of diminishing returns. And it's different for each one of them. But it's important to remember that the most effective way to do influence influence work for a, for a big move in a system is to try to hit as many of the buckets as possible rather than just piling into one, if that makes sense. So... I've rambled on long enough, and I know there'll be more questions for that. If anybody wants to know any more about that, either shoot me a DM or leave a question in the faction section of the uh, Discord, and I'll try to get you some more information. Whenever you start talking about BGS and stuff, I, I think about when I first started listening to like Lave Radio or this show, you know, when I was really new at the game and people would start talking about BGS or power play. And I had no idea what they were talking about and thought they were possibly the same thing and used interchangeable and they, they really aren't. So like new yeah. people, if you were completely lost to what he's talking about, he's talking about BGS that's background simulation. And that I, like when I first started playing the game, I had no idea that in every station you go through, you know, there's all those named factions. I had no idea that they, I thought they were just random things that you had no effect on, but literally some random basement dweller could pick some random faction he likes the name of in some station and probably, you know, take control of that system eventually if there aren't other players in there and, and yeah. stuff because you can just sit and do all of these things. So if there's any basement dwellers out there, a cool one to do go do stuff for and you never have to talk to anybody if you don't want to is come do stuff from loose screws and, and, and we'll, we'll <laughs> gladly take your help. <laughs> that's really selling it, Jig. <laughs> you, you know me. Check us out at loosescrews.com. Um, all right. So uh, 
did any of you guys have any comments or questions about Nurgle's, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 graduate level course he just put on there? <laughs> yeah, just al- tell me who to kill. <laughs> it was almost as interesting as my Star, Star Trek statistics, but he did pretty good. Almost great. <laughs> Well, all right. Now you get to try to top it, Data. Let's. Uh, can you tell us what's happening in the Galnet? Yeah, the Galnet news, which I have read and followed with all week, and definitely have performed in-depth analysis on each article. Uh, they are published and haven't just skimmed through everything in the past few minutes. So you, you, you spent most of your time looking up those Star Trek stats. I understand, but it's okay. Oh, that took all of my brain power. I'm, I'm pretty much spent. For the evening. Smooth brain. <laughs> yeah, like a raw Smooth chicken breast. Like two, two raw chicken breasts put together. Yep. <laughs> All right. Since last week, I don't know if Yuri Grom had won his war against the Federation in that CG. The Colonia Bridge Project, where the brewer company uh, took in donations from the community, materials, and enough to build, I think, all 30 megaships that will be placed every few hundred light years on the route between <laughs> Colonia and the bubble. Is it just me, or did that happen extremely fast? That was I smashed. We too fast. Have, uh, I'm pretty sure I didn't have a chance to even log into the game. Yeah, it was super fast. <clears throat> that was real fast, yeah. Uh, there was a corporate split at Mess. Mastopolos Torval, Mastopolos Mining. Remember the uh, robot spider legs head detaching power play leader? You remember yep. from last week? Spider episode, Anus. I think. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then some little bit more off the wall articles came out. The Joker's deck, this uh, high, high, uh, high rolling secret gambling circle was was uh, hit by an art thief. They stole a Joker's card. Ooh. Ooh. It's just, the art thief stole artwork for their new deck of cards. Hey, guys, this is really big fucking news. I don't know why you're it's, not freaking out right they're, now. They're stealing. They're, they're moving around all 52 secret gambling circles, stealing a different card from each gambling circle to build their own deck. It is 52 cards in a deck, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. There you go. That's the joke. Uh, Orion University claims ownership of the Scrivener clan dredger that we that we saw next to the Hesperus megaship a couple of a couple of story beats ago in the Azimuth saga storyline. So this is the that Scrivener clan dredgery was next to the Hesperus megaship when that was found. Then it made a jump and disappeared. But it has come out now that that was a, an an old like academic oriented uh, research ship sent out a couple hundred years ago, and the university is looking for it again. So I think there's a new CG that I don't know what the details of it are, other than the system name that it's. Centered in is some terrible name. Oh, jeez, how many more articles are there? Okay. The uh, T-1000's uh, Minority Report Agency exposed <laughs> another federal terrorist network before they did anything, before they committed any crimes. Uh, Big news. <laughs> and, they made it up. They planted all of it. You can't argue with Robert Patrick. It's all a conspiracy. It's a distraction. Look over there. Hadrian Duval, person in the Imperial Royal Family. He was a his HQ was attacked by the NMLA, the New Mexico Library Association, or who is it? I can't remember. (laughs) Some Nurgle's mustache. Mustache looks Looks amazing. Looks amazing. Amazing. Yeah. 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 Objectively correct. <laughs> so if you want to go get some Imperial rank, go to the Paresa system, P-A-R-E-S-A, and right. help with evacuations. We have a burning station. Starport. So if you still need rank to get that cutter, 
load up some passenger go cabins. Go save go. some slave traders. So, so what happens if I go and I buy Imperial slaves and I bring them into the burning station? <laughs> <laughs> you release them. <laughs> You'll get a, a fine, and you won't a be able burning to get smell. Anybody. That's yeah. you get a burning <laughs> smell. That's what you get. <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to do that. Yeah, no doubt. I love it. I love when you can. I love when you commit some little infraction. You get a fifty credit fine, and now they won't let you pay it off, and they won't let you evacuate any people from the burning oh. station. <laughs> yeah, <That's not> cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gotta leave. You gotta leave with your ship empty, fucker. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you hit yeah. floating debris. 300 credit, fine. Crime and punishment is definitely something they still have to figure out how to fix in this oh, game. <laughs> no kidding. There, do, you, do you really think that's on the top of their priority list? I don't think it's on their list. I don't, have you yeah. seen the bug tracker? I don't think they have a list. <laughs> that's not a list. That's, that's uh, a roadmap or something. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I just don't know. It's a joke. It's a joke. That's what it is. Uh, yeah. It's a dot uh, notepad file. <clears throat> and thus... Thus concludes our in-depth analysis of this week's news. Thank you. All right, we'll have to get Bard on here or Baron. What do, what do we call him? It just, it's it's, it's Jay Baron. Baron in game. Blame the Bard in Discord. Someone should really recruit him to read these. <laughs> yeah, we got to have him come in or ha- talk him into recording something that we can insert in the show. Hey, there you go. Because if if we just have him on here, he knows so much more than any of us. We'll just look dumber than we already har- are. And I didn't think that was. Sp- Possible. That would be really difficult. Smooth brain. <laughs> Chicken breast. <laughs> oh, Chicken breast. Um, uh, okay, looks like... I'm with yeah, you, no, listeners. You know I'm completely lost. Yeah. We're, we're going we're gonna to go real quick, just randomly. Yeah. I'm going to do a chick chat, which I haven't done in a while. Uh, chick chat. That's all I got. Um, this week's chick chat, uh, I'm just going to go with, uh, I want to know what everybody's favorite uh, Nicolas Cage movie is, because for some oh, reason, God. I got dubbed the the Discord's Nicolas Cage earlier today, and, and a bunch of mm-hmm. Nicolas Cage p- pictures got posted. So I want to know what your favorite Nicolas Cage movie is. I'm going with Raisin Arizona with Leaving Las Vegas at close second. So apparently I like movies where it's an adjective or a verb followed by a location or is movies that I like with him. So uh, I'm going with uh you guys Con got a favorite Air. Nick Cage? Con Air. Oh God, no. No. <laughs> what? No. Oh, come on. no, that movie is so bad. Yeah, it is. <laughs> no, any movie of John Malkovich is a win. Come on. Uh, Cyrus me, what the was, virus. I, what was the I one have, where was it Dogs of War where he was the arms dealer? Lord of War. Lord of War. Lord that's of War. That's I like it. That. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's a, that's a, yeah, that's that's a, a really like that good one. movie. It is. That one's far too normal for him, though. Like, we got we to yeah. go something like, what, Matchstick Men? Was he in that one? Mm-hmm. That one was weird. I, no, I, I mean, have... he's pretty hard up for money. He'll make anything right now. These days, yeah, he's in freaking anything. You go yeah, through Netflix. Like... Netflix. Netflix should have a Nicolas Cage category. There should, just, there should just be a Nick Flix. <laughs> you can just go watch any <laughs> Nicolas Cage movie. <laughs> he was in some movie recently where it was like a like a Five Nights at Freddy's type of deal where he was in an arcade overnight and had to fight off these monstrous monstrous animatronics. Yeah, I, I read about that. It was like he doesn't a talk. Straight up he has no di- he has no dialogue in the whole in the whole movie. Was so it him just making his fucked up faces? I think so. Yeah. Oh, I gotta watch that one. Is there another My one where he's favorite. got a drug sniffing pig or something? I, I want to see that. That's supposed to be good. It's called Pig. My, he's a he's a truffle hunter. A truffle hunter. Yes. Yeah. Sign me supposed up for to that one too. Yeah. My favorite Nicolas Cage role is his role as Superman in uh, the Teen Titans Go movie. Is he voice voice Superman? Yep. The, there, there was a period where Kevin Smith was writing a Superman movie where Nicolas Cage was rumored to play Superman in a live action. Yeah, I've seen that, that never photo came that behind the scenes. Yeah, yep, that would have been too. weird. That would have been weird as hell. Um, all right, we'll move off on Nicolas Cage now. And let's move on to dev news. There isn't much of shit to talk about. Tuesday's stream... Uh,
of the new SRV that was announced, the two-seater SRV, which means we should be seeing that footage probably relatively soon. What, you get any excitement there? Yeah, I want to see this thing. I mean, yeah. yeah. I'm excited to see it. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm very I guess, curious about it. guess we're just waiting around to see that again. Yeah. Um, and, and I do suspect that as we move forward into Odyssey and they get more things straightened out, I think there's going to be more things like that. More like there may be a, who knows, there may be another SRV. There may be more fighters. I suspect there may be at least one more ship out there somewhere that will eventually trickle out. Well, the coolest thing ever is if they announced they, he shot this footage and just like in the background, a uh, ship, flies by that nobody recognizes. Yeah, yeah. Like that. Everybody's, yeah. Everybody's, then everybody loses their fucking mind. But we know FDev really isn't good at building hype in that kind of way. So I, I know that's not going to happen. But, you know, you can have that tip for free, FDev. Do that, and you'll build some excitement. They um, should definitely debut the Panther Clipper in an AX configuration. <laughs> being chased <laughs> by the Panther Clipper. a Thargoid mothership. No, no, no. It's on the offense. Oh, just because yeah. it's a badass. Our going to mothership. Just we haven't from blowing up. <laughs> we haven't heard from Salvation in a couple weeks. You never know. Oh, yeah. it's true. All right. Well, we can always hope. Um, then what? Today's stream, they just did CQC night. Uh, I managed to crash. <laughs> I got in their first match. Um, they played Capture the Flag. If you're not familiar, it's a 4v4 where you got to grab the the other team's flag and bring it back to your base while they aren't holding your flag. And I just went in oh, there and I just... is that how it captures the flag and I just, works? And I just blew them <laughs> up a whole bunch of times because I was protecting the flag or blowing up the other flag carrier and they actually... Playing the, you were playing the game. Yeah. I, I was playing the game, but then Zach afterwards... <laughs> Oh, that Chig had a lot of kills. He he wasn't really trying to play. And I'm like, wait a minute. Yes, I was. My team won, bitch. Um <laughs> but, but I picked up I'd like called, 18 called kills too. in the match. Um, Should have called him I, out completely. And then and then I didn't get in the next match and I I I actually had a comment brought up from you know, when they were playing the next match where I told them, maybe you should uh, give arcs above the weekly cap of 400. You get more people playing CQC. They read the comment and agreed. So, God damn it, just do that already. Um, Hell yeah. CQC, I cannot plug it enough. We now have Single Malt Scotty hanging out uh, on PC, helping out the squadron. We're going to try to get some nights where we play more. Uh, I was playing CQC, just regular deathmatch, before uh, the developer stream today, and uh, it was in there with Single Mutt Scotty. He's definitely a solid player. Ooh, I managed to get yeah. a win with him in there and Musketeer, so I got a win over Musketeer. He got Whoa. two wins against Musketeer after I was nice. gone. He actually screenshotted and showed, so oh yeah. Um, yeah. It was... Nice it was uh, that's impressive. Um, so he's he's definitely a, a solid player, and I'm glad to be seeing somebody from the squadron in there when I'm in there. Doesn't happen very often unless we're doing an event. But right now, I happen to I've just been randomly bumping into him, so that's a lot of fun. I my progress, I'm 48 percent through legend, <sighs> which means I still need over a million XP, which means about a thousand wins. So I'm nowhere near elite yet, but I'm working on it. Um, uh, you guys have any comments on the CQC? Well, here's the I just want to comment on this their CQC stream. They played two games of Capture the Flag, then they played one death match, and then the stream was over. Well, one team death match. So they played That's three like games of their entire game, stream. Right? It's, it's, actually, it's actually more than that. No, each of those is a 15-minute timer. They can okay. end quicker if people die faster, but usually they don't get the, the better players in there so they don't end super fast. Like at, when they did the team death match, I was in a death match that started at the same time. The usual afternoon crew of all elite players and our match was over, you know, in like 10 minutes. Their match went the full 15-minute timer before yeah. it was over. Uh, but they they 
they did play for about 45 minutes, but it's, I, I think if they're going to do stuff like that, they should just do the regular death match, which is seven minutes, seven and a half minutes, you know, at maximum. And then everybody, a lot more people get opportunities to just kill them. Cause that's all that anybody really wants to do is get on and get a chance <laughs> yeah. to, you know, kill, kill them and they can get better. I will say watching Zach stream, dude, move your pips just once in a while would be, you know, oh, he's, <laughs> he's trying, more. he's trying to talk to and reach out. I know, Come on. But just, just once I, I watched the, a whole match of, of capture the flag and I'm like, just move them once. Just wait. It's two, two, two the whole time. And I, I don't mean to sound like, you know, he just, it just was annoying. Um, but that, that, You're that such a gatekeeper, it kind of me. I was going to say the same thing. Teflon. God, you guys are always ganging up on me. Bastards. <laughs> All right. Anything else you guys have? CQC nights are always fun when we get a bunch of our people in there plan yeah yeah as i said again if somebody Europe's. wants to take control of that let's do it i mean we got guys who are on all the time i mean crash love you man manitook uh black wolf um uh, who else is on the geeks on bonzo man uh who are some of the other people who are on all the time help me out somebody uh, in the bard a uh, volt, uh, volt. Oh, oh, yeah. volt. Bonzo. forget about school yeah. 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 Drop out. Come to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Drop out. <laughs> organize events. Um, yeah, don't don't take happen. advice. A Scottish happen, uh, Legion. Um, it'll uh, happen. Or, it'll happen. Kenobi's around. Yeah. I mean, organically. Yes. Yes. Let's let's get some of that going. Um, um, other than that, I guess I can start doing sign out. We've got. I don't know. Come to the website, buy gear. It's loose screws. That's loose screws, ed.com. We got t shirts, hoodies, onesies, yoga pants, mugs. Um, uh, I don't know, electric cars. Uh, you name it. Yeah. You can probably get it on there. Buy, buy some merch. Mommy Tracks has to pay, has to, has to pay for this new car. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we got discord.io. Forward slash loose screws. It's a Discord. Come join the Discord. We have new people joining all the time. Some people leaving. You know, it's just uh, Odyssey was a disappointment. A lot of people, a lot of the communities uh, took a beating. We're still going strong. So if you want a good place to come hang out, especially if you're a newer player who you know is just discovering the game, uh, you know, come hang out. It's it's or, it's a good time. Or if you're playing a different game right now, still come and hang out. There's always people yeah. playing different stuff. Invoice, with yeah, yeah. In the evenings. Yep, you go down the list of games that people are playing. You know, mm -hmm. at that while, while you know we're in here, and every damn game under the sun somebody's playing. So, uh, it's always. I haven't heard of that time. one. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's new. It's new. It's for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Um, uh, I yeah. guess I'll do a cheese. Yeah. All right. Yeah, do a cheese. I, Chig chat this week. It was awesome. Some people have started putting suggestions for cheese accessories and cheeses. I'm going to steal from there now because I've run out of ideas. So I'm going, the one I'm going this week is something called Chirpy, C H H U R P I. It is from the Her Himalayas. I don't know. I guess probably in the pocket of every Sherpa bringing you up to Mount Everest would have some it's described as the hardest cheese in the world basically uh, best i can take it's like a uh, cheese flavored jolly rancher at the end of the day you put it in your mouth it kind of breaks down and and you chew it it comes from the milk produced by a chowry c-h-a-u-r-i this is a cross between a male yak and a female cow i'm wondering mm. what uh, a male, a bull, wow. and a female yak would be called, but yeah, it's 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 unusual. You got some crossbreeding, making some weird mutant milk that turns into this super hard cheese that you suck on like candy. Everything about it is strange as fuck, but I definitely kind of want some. Um, a cheese Jolly Rancher sounds actually hideous. very appropriate for that. <laughs> I know somebody, you know, said jerky, but really it's, it's so hard. You don't really chew it right away. You got to kind of let it soak in your mouth for a little while. Kind of weird. That was Dan uh, Gleibitz's suggestion, by the way. Well, I don't even think he suggested. He just said he just was making me aware of it, which I 
I love when people make me aware of new cheeses or <laughs> old cheeses or hard cheeses or soft cheeses or cheeses, cheeses. Oh my God. Um, I, that's all I've got for the show. Any last thoughts from anybody or are we shutting it down? Pull the plug. I don't know how to I'm pull the plug. Pull the plug. Okay, I'm cut, okay, cut the cord. Oh, I got to figure out how to do this. How do I do this? Oh, I got to tell Craig to leave, but Craig's not here. So we'll just say you still you this. still you still just say Craig Lee. It's fine. Yep. Yep. All right. Good yep. night, everybody. Yep.